In this video, I'd like to give you some thoughts and my opinions about the Nikon Z8 after using it for about a hundred times. Hey, welcome to another video. In this one, I'd like to talk about my Nikon Z8. I did a video about six months ago giving you my initial reaction to taking it out. But I had only taken it out once or twice when I made that video, and that's really not uh, a fair assessment of the camera. So I, now that I've taken it out probably a hundred times or close to it, I've got a better understanding of the camera, what its limitations are, which are few, <laughs> what I like about it, what I don't like about it, so let's talk about it. I know who my demographics are, mostly who watches this channel. So I'd like to pretty much speak to you and get some of those things out of the way from the start. And one of them would be weight. In my initial reaction, I said I didn't think the weight was going to bother me at all. And for the most part, I think that still holds true. It's heavier than the Z7 II, which is what I'm filming on now. But I don't think that it's that substantial that it bothers me. I, I still don't think weight is an issue with one caveat. Because I like to go out several days in a row with my camera, and I've been interested in doing a lot of uh, bird photography lately, if I were to take it out, let's say six, seven, eight days in a row, and I'm out for anywhere from an hour to maybe two and a half, three hours at a time, by that seventh day, that can, it does start to feel a little heavy. After taking a day or two off, I go back out with it. I can stay out for two hours. It's fine. But if it is something you're going to use every day and you're mature, in your age, it may or may not get to you depending on the condition your body is in. But it really hasn't, I can't say that it, it has bothered me overall. So let's get that out of the way. The second would be battery life. I know some people are concerned about battery life. Because I only go out, even though I shoot birds in flight and I'll shoot at 10 and 20 frames a second quite often, I've never run out of battery life. Matter of fact, I don't know that I've ever even got past halfway through battery life, and I've come close to filling up a card. So I usually, let's say, oh, I'm firing off three, 400 images on that card. Battery life gets down to, I still probably have three quarters left. I can go out twice without recharging the battery, probably by the third time. I've gone, I've gone a third time, so let's say five to six hours wandering around. Now, I'm not shooting the whole time, obviously. But I would say you can use it for five, six hours, even shooting birds in flight, and you'll still have a little battery life left to it. I do like the deeper grip on this camera compared to the others. I, I do prefer it. The shutter speeds. I didn't realize... If you're shooting sports, if you're shooting birds in flight, I didn't realize how important that extended shutter speed was. I use it quite often. Many times I'm up at 1 16,000. I don't know that I've ever gone to 32,000th of a second. But I usually get up over 1 over 8,000 in my shutter speed for birds in flight. And with the Z7 II, it stopped at, I believe, 8,000. But I typically go beyond that with the Z8. When you're shooting birds in flight, and even sports, that can come in handy. So I think that that alone, if you're out shooting wildlife, I think that's a big upgrade. Most people have probably mentioned the sensor cover that comes down. If your camera is turned off, the sensor cover will come down and you can change lenses. For a place like Florida that can be windy 
or at the beach because I shoot seascapes from time to time. Having that sensor cover really comes in handy. I've had this camera, I think about eight months. And like I said, I've taken it out a hundred times and I haven't had to clean the sensor. Where the Z7 II, I have to clean that thing every, I don't know, five times that I use it. So it really does protect the sensor a lot more. I, I, I think that's a, a big plus. Something else to break. However, I think it's worth while to have. If you're still in the DSLR world, the EVF to me, at first I wasn't so sure of it, but now I'd never go back to the optical viewfinder. This EVF where you can look at your exposure, granted you still have your light meter and your histogram, but that being able to see your exposure right in camera like that, I, I, I'd have a hard time going back to the optical viewfinder. The screen on it, the back screen, even if you look through the eyepiece, it's very bright. It's a, it's a good eye, it's a good screen for being able to see, even here in Florida with bright sunlight, I can still see that screen. It's very good. Now that they've done the firmware upgrade and included the bird eye technology in the Z8, it's improved my bird photography. I can't say a lot, but it does help. One of the reasons why I went from the D850 into the mirrorless system, two reasons, one probably more important than the other. One was to me, and I think a lot of people would tell you this, your lenses are more important than your camera body. And I waited a while before I went to the Z7 II, not as much because of the second card slot, that didn't bother me as much because I'm not a wedding photographer. But because Nikon hadn't really flushed out their lenses yet. Now that Nikon has a, a, a nice variety of lenses and there's third parties that are making lenses for the Z mount, I felt like it was important enough to upgrade my lens collection more so than the bodies. In other words, if I was going to invest money into a new system or into more lenses, I decided it was more important to put money into the Z lenses than buying more F-mount lenses, even if I was getting F-mount lenses used, which I was. I was buying and selling off of eBay and Fred Miranda and different sites, I was swapping out a lot of lenses trying to fine tune exactly the lenses that I wanted to keep. Most of them weren't very expensive lenses, but I found that I really wanted to settle on just a handful, small amount of lenses and just keep those. And so what I did was I started selling off my F-mount lenses that I really wasn't using. And when Nikon would put their Z lenses on sale, I'd buy one. And I had two or three Z lenses before I ever had the Z7 II. And you think, well, that's kind of nutty. But I knew I was going to keep those lenses for a long time. Like my 80 to 200 lens, the, the F-mount lens that I had, the 2.8 lens that I used for sports and other things, I, I had that lens close to 20 years, I think, and used, used the heck out of it to the point where the autofocus doesn't even work anymore, even though I tried to take good care of it. And I was, I'm always very careful with my equipment, but I just used it so much that it, it eventually broke down. But my other ones, like let's say the 20 millimeter F lens, the 1.8, versus the 20 millimeter F1.8 S lens. 
The S lens is better. It just is. Is it substantially better? Probably not. The point is that I'd gotten to a, an age in my life where this was going to be the last collection of lenses that I was going to accumulate. And so did I want to continue to use old technology or did I want to upgrade and know that once I bought these lenses, I'd use them forever and I will because of, of my age and my health and everything else. If I use them for 20 years, I, I, I be hard pressed to still think that in 20 years, I'm going to be walking around the lake shooting photographs. I probably won't. And so these lenses are going to outlast me. And that's a big reason why I did it, why I jumped to the mirrorless system. Wasn't as much to keep up with the technology and the camera bodies as it was to keep up with the technology with the lenses. Another reason to me, which for me was a big upgrade, say over the D700 to the Z8 is the raw file versus a TIFF file. Raw files to me are just so much better. You can do so much more with raw files, especially if you expose your bracket, blend your images, you can't beat it. I went back recently, which I'm planning on doing my next video, I think is gonna be about this, is going back and looking at some of my older files and trying to post-process them again. And you just can't get as much. Now, granted, the D700 is a 12 megabyte file versus 45 megabytes, but still, that TIFF file versus the raw file, raw files are much easier to work with, in my opinion. The video capabilities are supposed to be much better on the Z8. I'm not a video guy. I may use them in the future. I'm not the one you need to listen to when it comes to video on the Z8 because I just really haven't used it. I use the Z7 II to do my filming sometimes. Easy to set up, works great. From what I understand, you can do even more with the Z8, with the 8K and things like that. Which brings me to another topic. I use the Sony XQD cards, which are what, 400, read write speed. I don't have any of the faster cards yet for video, so I really can't speak to it. The Sony cards for shooting stills are fine. You know, I'm at a, I'm at a crossroads now where I'm probably going to have to get a couple more cards to go to Iceland, and I'm deciding which cards I may or may not want to get. I may get more two Sony cards I might get some of the pro grade, the faster cards that are really made for video. Again, if you want to leave a comment, tell me about your experience with it. I'd appreciate it. Let's talk about some of the drawbacks. You may or may not put weight in the drawback. I don't really put it in the con side, but I could see it's might be borderline for some people. For me, it's not. I think the weight is okay. It's about a half a pound heavier than a Z7 II. Because I have an L bracket on the Z7 II, I don't feel it as much. I haven't put an L bracket on the Z8 yet, but I'm going to when I go to Iceland. Despite having grown up with the Nikon system and their menu system, which I'm not being critical of Nikon's menu system, I think it's actually quite good. I, I haven't shot Sony. I know a lot of people complain about the Sony menu system. Nikon has a very well thought out menu system. That being said, the Z8 has a very complex menu system. There's a lot in there and there's a big learning curve. Even over the Z7 II, there's a learning curve. And I'm still, even after using it all these times, I'm still adjusting to it a little bit. And because the, the buttons up here are different than the Z7 II, I'm pretty well settled into what's up here compared to the Z7 II. 
you have your, your focus modes and your white balance and setting your speeds as far as uh, 20 frames a second or a two second shutter release and, and bracketing, that's all up here. And sometimes I, I forget that. So there is a learning curve. If you're, if you're coming from a whole other system, it might be easier to pick up on this. But the functionality on the Z8, you can look at it as a pro and a con. Once you get used to it, it's very much a pro. The functionality, you can assign a lot of things to your, to your function one, your function two, your button over here. You can even assign something to your record button. There's a function button on the back. Um, they're all over the place. You can assign all different types of things not counting your I menu, your my menu. There are so many things you can do to set up the camera the way you want it, which is great, but you have to learn how to do it. And once you get comfortable with it, then I would consider it a very much a pro side of the camera. But when you first get it, it can be a con because there is a learning curve and you might think, well, I don't need to use that, and I don't need to use that. You do. Be aware that having a Z8 is almost like having a little computer in your hands. There's so many things that you have to get used to. It is like having a computer. And so some people might get intimidated by that. And my only advice would be is to either buy a course. I bought John Grinko. Grinko, Grinko, his course on the Z8, which is, it's excellent. I went through that a couple of times and I still go back and look at different topics from time to time. But if you do something like that and you don't rush it, you take your time and you learn the camera, then it won't feel quite as, in, as intimidating as it, when you first get it and you look at it and you think, oh, I don't need all this. Well, for me, I just slowly integrate it some of these functions from the camera. And now that I understand it and I use it, I think it's a big plus. Another downside would be the recalls. The first uh, recall, I can't remember what it was, but it didn't affect my camera, so it, I didn't have to send it in. The second was the little camera straps. And I do put a camera strap on my body from time to time. I do walk around with it, but not that often. And because I didn't really want to send it back and risk not getting it back in time to go away on my trip, I, I haven't sent it in. I don't think I will just because I, I just don't use a camera strap enough to really concern myself with it. And I don't see myself getting rid of the camera body any time in the near future and even the far future, so I just didn't bother to send it in. You do have to get used to the blackout a little bit now. When I say blackout, I don't mean, let's say there's a bird going, fly, going by and you're at 10 or 20 frames a second. The camera won't block out. The Z8 does not black out. You can see it straight through. When you turn the camera on, just what I do is, as I'm approaching Let's say I see a bird off in the future. I turn my camera on because it takes a second or two to get past that blackout period. And then I hit my button. Or I take my finger and hit the focus button a little bit just so it's active. And so when I'm approaching, that's how I know I can just stick it up and I'm ready to go. If I were to approach that bird, turn it on, wait, hit the focus button, I'd miss a lot of shots. So that's how I avoid getting around it, is I'm ready to go by the time I hit a spot where I think either that bird's gonna fly or I wanna photograph it. <clears throat> Same with sports, if you're shooting sports. Also, you in the menu system, you can go back and tell it when to go dark. I don't remember the, I know I have it set up where if I don't use it for, I think it's 10 seconds, it will darken itself again. 
but you have to keep that in mind. So if you're walking across and a bird jumps out in front of you, you have to focus that thing and it will be, be blacked out for half a second. And you've, so that is a little bit of a drawback if you're shooting birds in flight. I was watching a video just last night with a fellow up in Canada. And he was comparing the Z62 files to the Leica Q2, I think it was, files. And he was saying that you could get a used Z6 for seven, eight hundred dollars, stick a lens on it for a few hundred dollars. Let's say the 50, you could pick up probably the 50 millimeter lens, which is what I'm filming on now for four hundred dollars. So for a thousand dollars all in, versus a $6,000, $5,000 Q2. I think he had a Q2 monochrome even. In his video, the point was, he showed you the files and they were pretty darn close. And he even admitted that as far as value, the Z6 was a better value. And I would pose the same thing about a Z8 over a UZ6 or a Z7. If you were shooting sports and wildlife, to me, it's a, the Z8's worth the upgrade. If you're not, if you're just an all-around shooter, I don't know that it'd be worth the upgrade. However, to me, where it is worth the upgrade, again, I mentioned, you know, I'm not getting any younger and neither are you. A few years back, I had heart surgery and then I had blood clots and it was a rough go there for a couple of months. And that, it, it changes people. It changes your perspective of, on life and what your future is and what you want to do with your life. And that's the reason why I have the better lenses in the Z8, because it makes it more fun for me to do photography. When I had the, say the D750, I don't want to say the, the D700 because I was shooting a lot of high school sports at the time. So I did use it quite often. <clears throat> but when I stopped shooting high school sports, I wasn't using my camera nearly as much. And so I might go two years, three years, and not use the camera a hundred times. Well, inside of six months, I've used this camera at least a hundred times because I really enjoy taking it out. So the argument of, well, does gear matter? Gear doesn't matter as far as necessarily getting you better images onto that sensor card. You still have to go through the process to learn how to do all that. So in that regard, no, it's not going to make you a better photographer. It is going to make it more fun for you, in my opinion. It has for me. And because of that, I use the camera a lot more. And when you go out and use the camera a lot more, it makes you a better photographer because you're practicing more. It's not because the camera does the work for you, even though, yes, with the autofocus and everything else, somebody can argue it does. You still have to know the tricks and the techniques on how to do it. For example, can you bracket and, exp and do it Exposure blending with a lot of cameras, of course you can. And you can get great images. You don't need a Z8 for that. But it makes it more fun to take it out and do those kinds of things, at least for me. And that was the point that the guy with the Leica Q2 monochrome was trying to make versus the Z6. He loved taking that camera out. And so for him, it was worth spending all that money. And so for me, that's what made it worth upgrading to the better lenses and the better camera body. So you have to decide for yourself. Those are my opinions about using the Z8 for a while. It's a wonderful camera. I love this camera. It makes me want to go out and shoot. I have very few bad things to say about it. Not bad things, but things you have to get used to. I would never... I, I can't imagine wanting or needing more in a camera other than, hey, maybe a smaller form factor with still keeping that deeper grip to make it a little bit lighter. As I get older, even older, 
I might need a, you know, a little bit lighter camera. But other than that, the functionality that you get in this camera with these lenses, I don't know how you beat it. You know, yeah, and some people could say, well, I go to a Fuji, blah, 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 and the medium format this and the medium format that. Okay, yeah, maybe you get slightly better files. But for me, because I shoot so many different things, I've shot everything on this already in the six months. Sports, wildlife, landscapes, seascapes. It's a great all-around camera. I even took it out and did street photography one time. It's not a street photography camera. You know, you can, can you do it? Yeah, but it's a, it's a big camera. You, it's, there are better cameras for street photography, but you can do it. You know, you can, I, I portraits, it's a great portrait camera. Landscape camera, it's a great landscape camera. Wildlife, great wildlife camera. Sports, great sports camera. So yeah, if you, are in a financial position and you're still with a DSLR and you're on the fence, the lenses are worth the upgrade. The camera body is icing on the cake. All right. Thanks for this long winded video for hanging in there. If you've made it all this way, take care of yourself. Next time it's going to be a much shorter video. I promise. Take care.